Welcome and welcome back for returning viewers. Uh, this is the first in a new series of, uh, I don't know, four to five minute videos designed to help you with your manuscript writing. Uh, this video will be focusing on how to write an abstract. And I guess for all those interested, um, my team's working on a new tool we're calling Journal One to remove some of the pain that uh, comes with trying to find a journal to submit to and figuring out out what on earth the requirements are for that journal. Um, so you drag in your manuscript, you click a couple buttons, and then what we provide you with is everything that journal re requires. So if this is of interest to you, if you want to try out the tool, uh, feel free to send us an email. Let's get to the abstract. So the core structure includes an introduction, methods, results, and conclusion. Let's start with the introduction. You know, aim for two sentences or less. Keep it simple no jargon, no acronyms, and has to be very concise. Most methods can be broken down into five core sentences. What's the design of your study and where did it take place? What were the inclusion and exclusion criteria? What was a primary outcome or primary objective? What was a secondary outcome? And then you can talk about your statistical or analytic plan. The results most often are also five sentences describing your study population and then talk about the characteristics of those included. What did you find for your primary outcome? I find this often takes a couple sentences and you could end on a key secondary outcome. For the conclusion, just like the introduction, aim for two sentences. Do not oversell your findings. That is a cardinal sin that I see very commonly and focus on your primary outcome. Um, here's one example of a study that I was a part of looking at the effectiveness of a pixaban versus rivaroxaban for patients with atrial fibrillation, a cohort study. So introduction, two short sentences. AFib is common in older adults, and the two most common treatments are pixaban and rivaroxaban. Clinical trials comparing the two drugs are lacking, and thus it's unknown if one drug is better than the other. Uh, methods, we conducted a cohort study of older adults with atrial fibrillation. We included adults over the age of 65 and excluded those on anticoagulants other than apixaban or rivaroxaban. Our primary outcome was to compare the rate of ischemic stroke. Our secondary outcome was to assess the risk of bleeding. And then our analysis included propensity score matching. Now to the results. Again, five sentences. Uh, so 40,000 patients newly prescribed apixaban were compared to 40,000 newly prescribed rivaroxaban. The mean age was 70, 40% were women, and most patients had normal renal function. The risk of stroke was lower among those who received apixaban compared to rivaroxaban. That was our primary outcome. The risk of bleeding was also lower for apixaban compared to rivaroxaban. That was our secondary outcome. Conclusion, in our cohort study of over 80,000 older adults with atrial fibrillation, we observed a lower rate of both stroke and bleeding for adults who received apixaban. An important limitation of our cohort study was unmeasured confounding. And really, that's it. I hope you found this helpful. If you have any comments, feel free to leave them below. And uh, over the next few weeks, we'll start posting videos on writing an introduction, methods, results, and discussion and conclusion. Thanks so much. Have a nice day.